With the rumoured cancellation of AMD's high-end RDNA 4 parts, it could be tempting to be a little disappointing. After all, essentially, this means that the high-end GPU segment for the next generation of products anyway will be left to NVIDIA with the RTX 50 powered by Blackwell. But ultimately, this could actually end up being a good thing from the perspective of AMD. I know that sounds a little crazy, but since RDNA 4 was having a lot of bring-up issues for the chiplet versions, what this actually means is that RDNA 5 gets a ton of additional resources and time to really make it the best possible GPU. To that end, I want to talk to you guys about some very intriguing rumours I've been hearing regarding both NVIDIA and AMD's strategy going into the next couple of years, because quite frankly, while of course RTX 50, as we've discussed on the channel already, is shaping up to be very impressive indeed, RDNA 5, well, let's just say that AMD really does have the opportunity to really bring a GPU to the market which is absolutely ridiculously powerful, potentially even taking the flagship from NVIDIA for the first time in quite a long time and offering a decisive win for the PC gaming space. There's a lot of stuff to get through here and, well, let's just jump right into it, shall we? after this message from the video's sponsor. Save big on your Windows 10, Windows 11 upgrades as well as other software with this video's sponsor, WhoKeys.com. Not only are WhoKeys offering huge discounts off of their huge library of Windows, Microsoft Office and Game Keys, but you can also get an extra 25% off with the coupon code RGT over the festive season. If you're planning to upgrade your PC or perhaps even build a new one for yourself or a loved one, particularly given all of the new parts launching next year, such as NVIDIA's RTX 40 Super Refresh in January, as well as, of course, all of those shiny new AMD and Intel processors, then the Who Keys Christmas sale is the perfect time to save on Windows keys as well as other software. For example, this Windows 10 Pro OEM key was originally $153 dollars 22 cents and right now it's down massively to under 23 us dollars and you can save an additional 25 percent off of our code rgt bringing the key down to just 17 dollars 19 cents and don't forget you can upgrade from windows 10 to 11 for absolutely free or if you prefer you can purchase windows 11 directly for just 22 dollars 18 original price was just under 220 us dollars with our discount code I've personally bought several Windows 10 as well as Windows 11 keys and also Microsoft Office packages for my own personal use on my own personal account to test and everything was legit and working. And also some of my friends have used the site too and it's always been smooth receiving codes, activating the software with no issues with any of the CD keys that myself and others have purchased. Activating their key is really simple. Just navigate to the product you want to buy, click buy, and you'll be led to the basket where you can add any discount codes. Just type in the code RGT, that's RGT, click apply, and of course, it will automatically take the 25% off. Then you need, just need to complete your purchase and the code will arrive within three to five minutes. They also have a wide range of Microsoft Office packages available for huge discounts, including Microsoft's Visual Studio if you're a budding programmer and developer, and there's even professional applications such as for SQL. And if you're newer to PC gaming and want to catch up on your library, well, there's games such as Street Fighter VI, Far Cry, Assassin's Creed, and much more. So head on over to whokeys.com, you can find the link in the video description, of course, to save a further 25% off of their Christmas sale with code RGT. Again, you can find the link in the description of the video to see the full library of offers over at whokeys.com. Now, I think the best place for us to begin is actually with NVIDIA, because it provides us a lot more context to the information from AMD and also gives you a better understanding of what's possibly going to be happening in the market. So back in November of this year, that's 2023, I did put out a video discussing some very interesting rumors that I've been hearing from my own sources regarding NVIDIA's plans for the RTX 50 series of graphics cards. Now, fortunately, some of those rumors were not just from my own sources um, for confirmation, but Copperite72 on Twitter has actually gone and released a couple of tweets to say that he'd been hearing the same stuff. So obviously this means that we have some level of confirmation, air quotes, that well, a lot of this stuff does seem to generally be NVIDIA's plans for the specification and general release strategy. For example, um, Copperite 7 has confirmed the number of SMs as well as the memory config, which is identical to my own sources. 
Now, this, of course, uh, leads us to this information, which I'd already put out, as I said, in November. But as a refresh, um, NVIDIA's GB202 seems to be ready to launch in Q4 2024, although some of my sources do insist that this date isn't correct. Instead, it's going to be Q1 of 2025. Roughly speaking, I would say maybe about 60 to 70% of my sources have told me Q4, and of course the remainder have told me it's going to be 2025. Now, as for the specifications that I've um, already put out, Coppertite 7 has confirmed the number of SMs and memory bus. He actually got the SM number correct first. I think I said 204, and then later my sources also told me 192. I got the memory configuration right, and then later Coppertite 7 confirmed the memory configuration. So, yeah, um, full credit to him as well. Um, again, his sources are really good. So, um, GB202 Blackwell seems to be based on 192SM, 384-bit GDDR7, 36 GBPS per pin, 36 gigs of memory. Um, they are achieving this, of course, because they're using higher um, density modules, so they're 24GB. Monolithic die on TSMC, TSMCs, Jesus, I can get there, in free process, likely N3E. And the L2 cache, I've heard different numbers, but uh, 96 megabytes of L2 seems to be one figure that's being touted. But I do know this is probably not correct, or possibly not correct. My source also confirmed that the cooler for the upcoming RTX 50 card will probably look very familiar. It's based essentially on the design and engineering which went into the RTX 1490 Ti slash Titan, whatever you want to say. I actually spoke about this more in a recent video. That is the cancellation of the 4090 Ti Super Titan, whatever it ended up being called. It doesn't matter now. It's pretty much um, done. But it was 142 SMs and roughly 10 to 20% faster than the base 4090. Now, interestingly, in this same video, I stated that a few of the sources were telling me that NVIDIA were actually considering releasing a higher-end card. This would be a Halo SKU, which would release later. So again, for hypothetical sake, Q4 2024, we would see the GB202. Again, it could be a quarter later, but let's just say Q4 2024. And then, later on, when RDNA 5 launches, NVIDIA would release a more powerful GPU. Now, RDNA 5 seems to be, roughly speaking, six quarters, 18 months if you prefer, after RDNA 4 launches. So that probably means we're looking at end-ish 2025, again, assuming there's nothing like a meteorite strikes. Um, so I heard there were two potential Halo SKUs from NVIDIA, which is quite ironic because, well, you'll know, see why in a moment. Anyway, the first option was GB201. Now, this was a monolithic die. I don't have any potential specifications from this, but essentially it seems to be GB202 just, well, more. So if you've seen any graphics card from any NVIDIA generation over the past God knows how long, you'll know how this works, whether it's Pascal, Cheering, Maxwell, what are we on now? Lovelace, there we go, my brain had a fart. You get the idea. Like, it's it's the same thing, just more SM, more cache, more memory, etc., etc. So there's not much to say about this. Obviously, the one problem with this is that you start running into, well, limitations, like, well, just how big can you make the actual die, right? If it's a monolithic die, not only are there actual physical constraints that you start running into, like, well, the reticle limit, for example, but... Um, you also start to run into yield issues and, well, just a whole bunch of other crap, which just makes it quite expensive. There was a preferred option from NVIDIA, though, and this is something a couple of sources have told me now, and that is an MCM design. Now, this could potentially have up to 384SM, although, personally speaking, I think it's more likely NVIDIA will go with smaller chips for the MCM. I don't know the exact number. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, sorry, the total SM number, but I think it's more likely they're going to go with a smaller design. The problem is, though, that regardless of this, there's just a lot of engineering challenges. Now, I don't want to say it's easy to do something, but when it becomes something like computer-related tasks, it's not as difficult to get MCMs working. That's not to say it's not challenging before anyone says it, 
but it's actually even more complicated with graphics because well just there's a whole bunch of reasons but um yeah ge just generally speaking graphics are a lot more sensitive to like things like latency and stuff like that so it just becomes a lot more challenging it's like i don't know uh, to give you a very stupid analogy, it's kind of like me saying to you, well, you know what, you have to climb this really high mountain. And you're like, well, that's 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 a little bit of a challenge. And that would be the uh, compute-related tasks. And then with the, you know, the, the graphics one, it's like, yeah, you're going to be climbing that mountain, only Zeus is going to continuously rain uh, lightning bolts down at you. Oh, and you're also going to have a mule on your back, and also you're going to have no climbing gear. Plus, also, did I mention there's a tornado heading you in your direction as well? I'm slightly exaggerating, but you get my point. There's, like, challenge levels on this stuff. Now, NVIDIA basically just doesn't seem super confident that MCM design will be ready. And frankly, I don't think that there's a high likelihood this will come to market. Now, if it does, I can tell you guys that, uh, yeah, you better have a spare couple of kidneys because it's going to be very expensive. Um, so I think that the larger monolithic design is basically the safer option from NVIDIA, but they would like to put out an MCM version. So where does this leave us with AMD? Because I've just talked, you know, at length about NVIDIA. Well, there's a lot of stuff happening within Radeon. And if you guys have had your ear to the ground or just really been carefully watching the market, you'll kind of have an idea of what's going on. So... One of the big things is AMD are essentially providing a lot more cash to RTG, Radeon Technology Group, for research and development. And this is across both the hardware and software stack. Both, of course, are very important. Now, yes, Radeon does provide the hardware, of course, for um, games consoles like the PlayStation 6 and the Xbox, etc. Et Plus, of course, you've got various APUs for customers, but a really big reason for all of this is AI. And this has been a buzzword, of course, over the last couple of years. And AMD have some really excellent products, both announced and upcoming. So things like the MI300 series, um, of course, has been really well received. Now, ultimately, I don't want to delve too deeply into the weeds here, but even just grabbing an extra 20% of the market could net AMD a lot of money. The market is expanding at a very fast rate. Now, assuming there's no bubble, which, um, well, yeah, there's a massive opportunity. In fact, AMD have recently predicted this opportunity could be three times larger than what it originally predicted by 2027. And again, this is a lot of investment cash for the company. And naturally, a lot of this will also just end up trickling down to gamers. Now, to this end, mid-summer of this year, I mentioned in a video that I heard AMD were indeed debating what the specifications of high-end RDNA 5 would look like and what their strategy would be. Of course, at the time, nothing is set, but it seems there's a growing pressure within the company, particularly given AMD essentially have had to take a backseat for nuking RDNA 4's Halo SKUs and also a little bit of disappointment with RDNA 3 just not hitting the performance targets that I even heard internally. RDNA 5, though, could well be an excellent opportunity because, in theory, the company would have somewhat of a leg up for MCM gaming designs. Now, remember, RDNA 4 was supposed to be MCM. It just wasn't, of course, as performant or as advanced as what RDNA 5 will end up being, just a natural evolution of architectures. But it just fell behind schedule, and plus there were some other issues. So basically, the high-end designs got canned, and instead, the lower-end mono designs, which I've discussed quite extensively, like N48, are going to continue. RDNA 5, though, could well change this. Now, I've heard some sources give me some information regarding a Halo SKU, um, and that actually could be up to 180 workgroup processors. Now, specifically, there seems to be two Halo SKUs being considered. There's a safer bet one, which is around 135 workgroup processors. And there's a second one, which is much more powerful, around 180. Now, this is where I need to bring in a disclaimer. Several sources have told me these numbers, 135 and 180. I'll tell you how we get to those figures in a second. But 
A very reliable source has also told me that these numbers are probably subject to change. And while the general plans of AMD having these Halo products to beat Nvidia seems to be true, if they want to do it, it seems that they haven't 100% set the number of workgroup processes in stone. Basically, they're tossing figures around internally, but nothing has actually been, should I say, set to a specific product, i.e. this stuff is just kind of numbers there internally saying, well, maybe this, maybe that, and therefore the actual number could end up being different. However, I'm going to proceed with 135 and 180 just because it's a nice way for us to actually kind of get an idea of what they're doing. Now, regarding the number of SEDs you can see on screen right now, you'll notice the specs I've provided. They remain nine across both configurations, but with only the number of shader arrays changing. Now, two sources have told me that this seems to be true, that the number of SEDs is consistent. The difference is, however, that the number of shader arrays per SED is potentially lower. So basically, this would mean that the SED itself is smaller. With this said, more sources are telling me that the number of SEDs remains consistent and the number of shader arrays is what changes. But basically speaking, if we look at the Halo SKU, which so far is 180 workgroup processors, that's again the ballpark figure, nine SEDs, multiplied by four shader arrays, multiplied by five workgroup processes, and of course you get that figure. And again, you can do the same math, of course, with the 135 one. Now, some other information I've heard is that the MCDs are essentially gone with the um, IC and controllers now, be uh, that's the Infinity Cache, now being part of the AIDs. Each SCD is basically with its own unique L2 cache, Data coherency is possibly being handled via mall. Um, and the power targets, I've heard it could be up to 600 watts. But again, that figure could potentially change for launch. Oh, speaking of power consumption, one of the things I wanted to talk about with N48, because I've leaked a lot of the performance figures. Uh, again, by the way, the performance figures haven't really changed versus my older information. Roughly speaking, 10 to 20% slower than the 7900 XT, although that is with non-final drivers. Ray tracing, however, is going to be faster than Narve 3 x of course, so RDNA 4 is going to be maybe 10 to 30% faster in ray tracing applications than an equivalently equipped RDNA 3 card, but again, the software stack is not final, so those numbers could change. But regarding the power consumption figures of N48, I've been told the figure so far is between 200 and um, 225 watts. So yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see what this is priced at, to be honest, because the production costs is definitely lower than N32. So in theory, anyway, AMD does have the capacity to drop the prices um, some of that could change, of course, based upon things like memory um, memory costs. Um, obviously, that, that stuff can be flexible. So it's going to be very interesting to see what AMD ends up actually uh, pricing these GPUs at. Because, again, they're going to not be as fast as the highest-end um, RDNA 3 cards right now. I am hearing there's going to be a refresh of RDNA 3, as I've mentioned a couple of times, but it's basically going to be part of the Radeon 8000 series. Um, I'm still not, to be honest, 100% convinced that they'll do that, but who the hell knows? Because, you know, mixed architectures in a graphics lineup is not anything new. AMD and NVIDIA have done it several times in the past. As far as I understand it, though, the specs haven't changed, so you don't get, like, um, you know, there's no difference. So it's still N31 again. There's no actual changes to the architecture so you don't like get infinity cash upgrades or any of that stuff it's basically the same thing over again the next couple of years ultimately are going to be very interesting for the pc market for a couple of reasons not only because of course amd and intel will be releasing their next generation of cpus which honestly i think is going to be extremely interesting Arrow Lake versus Zen 5 just across the board is going to be very cool, I think, to witness, particularly because Intel are really setting things up with uh, Arrow Lake, with the removal, for example, of hyper-threading, etc., etc. It's going to be a very cool architecture, I think. But also, while the graphics card market as well is very cool, I think that it's also going to be a very... Um, 
I think it's going to be a very interesting situation in terms of how consoles really fit into the uh, marketplace. Because obviously with all the rumors for the PS5 Pro as well, I think that Nvidia, AMD, and potentially Intel as well, are really gonna have to double down and offer some GPUs which are actually compelling, because otherwise a lot of folks I suspect may just say, well, you know what, sod it. I'm just gonna go with the PS5 Pro. Yes, of course the PlayStation 5 Pro isn't gonna be offering 120 hertz, you know, 4K gaming with all of the path tracing effects like a 4090 or whatever, you know, next generation cards from AMD and Nvidia can offer. But ultimately, while I do suspect the PS5 Pro is probably going to be more expensive, honestly, prices are very difficult to pin down at the moment, but I'm personally suspecting it's going to be at least 100 bucks more than the base model, maybe even a little more like 600 bucks. who knows? It's still ultimately a lot cheaper than buying some of the graphics cards that are on the market right now. Let me know your thoughts and opinions of this stuff, particularly, I think, in the mid-range, because again, while the flagship stuff is very cool and very interesting, how many folks really can spend like 2,000, 3,000 bucks on a GPU? With that said, guys, um, that's just about it for this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, I will also say that I wish you a Merry Christmas and hopefully you are gonna be doing some gaming and spending time with your loved ones. So consider this as like, you know, buy over the next couple of days from me. On the 26th, most likely there'll be a fun video uploaded to the channel, hopefully, um, depending on, you know, my own situation. But I think around the 26th, there should be a really fun video. It's not going to be a leak, but it's just going to be, well, let's just say something a little different. And then, obviously, service shall resume, well, as hopefully as soon as possible. With that said, thank you everyone for watching this video. Really, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing Christmas or whatever you celebrate. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.